Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. If you do have access to this workbook, though, there's a bunch of tabs down below. The green tabs representing, in essence, the answer key. The blue tabs showing the information we have done up to this point in the practice problem where we will continue at this point in time. This practice problem has having been created from scratch in a blank worksheet in a prior presentation. What have we done thus far? We've been constructing the income tax formula in a formula type setting or basis so that we can do the data input understanding and visualizing how the formula works and also so that we can create a secondary data input as an internal control as we enter the information into say software or populate it in our uh, tax forms so here's our example tax form that we've basically been mirroring over here in our worksheet starting with a very basic problem so we can give an outline of our formula as we continue on more complex problems we will do comparisons and expand our worksheet for now, let's just make it look a little bit fancier. So what we have is we've got the income line item. We've got the adjustments to income, the above the line deductions. In other words, giving us the subtotal of uh, adjusted gross income, AGI. Then we have the greater of the itemized deductions or standard deductions. And that's going to give us the greater of those two, in this case, being the standard deduction. That is what we can use to calculate the taxable income, which is often done uh, that's the bottom line of our income statement. And then we can calculate the tax often done by the software backing into the average tax rate with a formula. And then we'll have other credits, other taxes that will be will build on in more complex problems, giving us the total tax, which we have to then compare to the payments and any refundable credits, which we'll talk about in more complex problems, will then give us the total tax that is due or refund let's put an underline here and so so now what i'd like to do let's put some brackets around it to start off let's put some brackets around this thing i'm going to go home tab font group put some brackets around it i'd like to center this top header uh note that many people will probably say okay what i would do is do this home tab alignment and merge but I don't like that because then it kind of messes up my ability to see different columns because I have this one large cell. So I'm going to undo that or unmerge it. And I prefer to select this area, right click and go to the format cells. And then within the alignment and the horizontal alignment, I like going to the center across selection. And then I can do that. And so now it still centers and it's a little confusing here to see where that text is because I could see it's in that first cell, as you can see in the formula bar. But uh, it's, it's a lot nicer that I haven't kind of made one large cell. Okay, so then I'm going to try to color code this whole thing to try to indicate the good numbers and the bad numbers, which is a little bit tricky because on the top half of the formula down to here, you have an income statement, income good uh, or, or incomes is usually good on an income statement, but when you're thinking about it from a tax perspective, the income is, is actually bad, but I'm still gonna color the income as green and the deductions, which are kind of similar to expenses as red, because that's probably what we normally visualize in an income statement. And then it gets even a little bit trickier down here because down here we're talking about basically taxes and, uh, and credits which is a little wonky. So let's try to come up with a color scheme because color schemes actually do help. So on an income statement, typically income, let's make it green. So I'm going to go to the home tab. I'm going to select the A and I'm just going to make that our, our dark green. So hopefully we can see it in our practice problem. And then the deductions, which are like expenses, I'm going to make them red. So I'm going to select this whole area here, home tab, font group and let's make that red hopefully that's dark enough that we can see in the practice problem and that's going to give us our adjusted gross income so it's usually still going to be green because it's still positive because the deductions usually haven't taken it down to zero 
Then we're going to take the greater of the itemized or standard deductions. These are decreases, kind of like expenses on an income statement, which be typically red. So I'm going to, or, you know, a, a decrease. So I'm going to say that's going to be red. And then you could make like the standard deduction, like a negative number here. But usually I would make this positive. That'll make it easier to create our worksheets on the right and then just do a subtraction problem here. So let's put an underline under this under this red one, home tab, font group, underline, and that gets to our taxable income, which again would typically be green, right? So we're gonna go home tab, font group, and green, because it's usually still going to be positive, in which case we're going to be owing taxes. And then we've got the tax calculation. Now notice I'm backing into that number. I'll talk about that in a second but I'm gonna keep it black at this point because now we're multiplying that times a rate, which is kind of neutral, I guess. <laughs> and then on the bottom half, now we've got the tax. Taxes are kind of like bad. So I'm gonna to try to visualize the taxes as red now. So now I'm gonna say on the bottom half, the taxes are red and then the credits are good. So I'm gonna make that green. So I'm gonna say, all right, the credits are green. And then other taxes are bad. That's gonna increase the taxes. So I'm gonna make that red. And that'll give us our, our total tax. Tax is bad, so I'm gonna make that red. And then the payments uh, and refundable credits, the payments that we have made are good because we already made them, although we had to make them, which is not nice, but, and the credits are good. So I'll make those green. And then the uh, tax due or refund. In this case, the tax due is going to be red and that it would be a positive number. And then, and then the refund is going to be green. And so that would be... Now, we can actually show that over here with a, with a conditional formatting. I can try to say, hey, look, if this is a positive number, I want to make it actually red because that means there's tax that is still owed at this point in time. And if it's negative, I want to make it green uh, because that means that there's an actual refund. So notice it gets a little wonky again on the second half of the formula. Why? Because the taxes are bad. That's what we owe, right? So it's red. And then if there were credits, that would reduce the amount of taxes that we owe. And then if there's other taxes, that would increase the taxes we owe. Therefore, this minus this plus this would give us the taxes. The payments that we already made have been made. And therefore, if I subtract these two out, if I get a positive number, that means we still have tax that is due. Bad, right? If it's negative, right? So you, so you could try to flip all the signs here, but so that you end up with a, with a positive number that would be a refund. But I think this is actually the best way. I think this works well. We can indicate that this is not a refund by using our color scheme so we can easily see it, right? So we can do our conditional formatting. This is in the home tab, styles, conditional formatting. So you could do something like this and say, hey, look, if this is greater than, if it's greater than zero, then we want it to be, uh, we want it to be negative or red. So there it is, it's, it's red, perfect. And then if it's, and then I'll do another one. If I say, if it's less than zero, then I'm gonna hit the drop down. I want you to make it green. So let's test that out. Let's make this like negative two, turns it to green. So now we've got that pretty, pretty fancy conditional formatting that will kind of give us an indication if it's good or bad refund or the amount that is due. Now, the next thing I like to do is basically indicate in my formula, which of these formulae are coming from another worksheet and which are gonna be data input. So in other words, this line item is coming from another worksheet. And so I'm not gonna hard code or type in 100,000 here because it's coming from this worksheet at the least. We'll add more worksheets later. So that, therefore, I'm, I'm gonna leave that is. The adjustments to income will be the same. I haven't got a worksheet for it yet, so it's hard coded as a zero, but Eventually, I'm going to create another worksheet once we do some adjustments to income.